So it's a new look. Why am I wearing the headset on camera? Because it's simply too loud, too tumultuous in this arena for me to possibly hear myself or hear my colleagues if in fact I didn't have the headset on. This is an entirely new circumstance for us, something we have not previously done in more than 30 years of covering boxing at HBO. It's because of one, one man, one of a kind, Manny Pacquiao, the only fighter we know of ever to be elected to his nation's legislature at the height of his boxing career. The only fighter who could have filled this stadium twice in a year against fighters not from the United States. The only fighter who is his nation's leading citizen and a cultural icon celebrated in media all around the world. The closest thing to Muhammad Ali in terms of his relationship to the global public since Muhammad Ali. Tonight, for the fifth consecutive time, he fights a significantly larger man, looking to once again stamp his imprint on boxing, equaled only by Henry Armstrong in the entire history of the sport. And still, just as is the case every time he enters the ring, he could lose. That's what's at stake for the sport of boxing for Manny Pacquiao for Antonio Margarito tonight. Let's get ready. Manny Pacquiao's whirlwind journey has taken him from the shanty towns of the Philippines to international fame to a seat in his nation's Congress. And in the ring, his rise to the top of boxing's pyramid over the past decade has been historic. Manny Pacquiao destroys the great Marco Antonio Barrera. Has knocked out Eric Morales. Pacquiao is annihilating Oscar De Loya. But it goes down again. That is the most spectacular one-punch shot of Manny Pacquiao's incredible career. The Filipino icon looks to further solidify his status as an all-time great, gunning for a fifth consecutive victory against a demonstrably bigger man. We thought Manny Pacquiao was great. He's better than we thought. While Pacquiao campaigns for history, Antonio Margarito looks for redemption. Over a 16-year career, Margarito fought his way to a welterweight title and an identity as one of the most feared men in the sport. That's the Antonio Margarito everybody was avoiding. And Antonio Margarito has the victory he's been waiting for all his life. But in one night against Shane Mosley, his career and reputation were shattered. Just minutes ago, an illegal pad was found in Margarito's gloves. Margarito looks like a beaten man. Shane Mosley has annihilated Antonio Margarito. After a one-year suspension for the hand wrap controversy, Margarito returned to the ring this year, and tonight looks to capitalize on this opportunity of a lifetime. <laughs> Moments from now, deep in the heart of Texas, in the splendor of Cowboy Stadium, pound for pound King Manny Pacquiao and prodigal son Antonio Margarito face off. Will it be history or redemption? Pacquiao versus Margarito is next. Pacquiao's next attempted step toward immortality versus his biggest opponent yet, Antonio Margarito. Pacquiao versus Margarito is being brought to you by Cowboys Stadium, Cereza Tecate, Con Caracter, AT&T Viva Mexico plan. Make calls with your wireless phone to or from Mexico as if they were local calls. EA Sports Fight Night Champion, available March 1, 2011. The Gearheads are coming to history with Top Gear, premiering next Sunday, November 21. And by HBO Pay-Per-View, the best in pay-per-view entertainment, brought to you by HBO. And 
now we are back live inside the boiling interior of Texas Stadium. Let's go to Michael Buffer to begin the pageantry. Ladies and gentlemen, we respectfully ask you to please remain silent for three national anthems. First, the national anthem of Mexico, performed by Mexican recording star Yair. Mexicanos al grito de guerra, el acero apresta y el bridón, y retiembla en sus centros la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. Y retiembla en sus centros la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. Siño patria, tus sienes de oliva, de la paz el arcángel divino, que en el cielo tu eterno destino por el dedo de Dios se escribió. Mas yo haré un extraño enemigo profanar con su planta tu suelo. Pienso patria querida que el cielo. Un soldado en cada hijo te dio. Un soldado en cada hijo te dio. Mexicanos al grito de guerra, el acero apresta y el bridón y retiembla en sus centros la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón y retiembla en sus centros la tierra. Al sonoro rugir del cañón. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, we respectfully ask to remain silent as Viva recording artist Zarina Prasad sings the Philippine national anthem. Ayang magiliw, pelas ng silanganan, alam ng puso, sa dibdib mo'y buhay. Lupang hinirang, duyan ka ng magiting, sa manlulupig, di ka pa sisiil, sa dagat at bundok, sa simoy at sa langit mong bughaw. May dilag ang tula at awit sa paglayang minamahal Ang kislap ng wataw at mo'y tagumpay na nagniningning Ang bituin at araw niya kailan pa may di magdidilim Lupa ng araw ng luwal Hatit pagsinta, buhay ay langit sa piling mo Amin ligaya na pat may mga api ang mamatay ng dahil sa yon. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's only fitting that here. In Cowboys Stadium, we have three members of the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders to sing the national anthem. Please welcome Casey Trammell, Brittany Evan, and Sonny Cranfield as they honor America with dedication to the men and women serving in harm's way with the armed forces of the United States of America. Oh, say can you early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the 
still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave Or the land of the free And the And now, uh, let's get this party started! Presenting a three-time Grammy Award winner with 35 million albums sold. Ladies and gentlemen, his new CD in stores November 16th, titled 5.0. Here is... A recording superstar with his new hit single, Just a Dream. He's an undisputed heavyweight king of music. Nelly!
about us yeah. when we gonna be open my eyes yeah uh, hey so I travel back down that road wish we come back no one knows I realize yeah thank you Dallas Texas the tape for Manny Pacquiao against Antonio Margarito. You see the one-year age advantage for Pacquiao. Four and a half inches of height advantage for Margarito. Shockingly, only a half inch of arm length advantage when the arms are measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. Pacquiao has extraordinarily long arms for his height. Manny Pacquiao chose to come in light. Weighed in at 144.6 yesterday and has gone up only to 148 overnight. Antonio Margarito followed his plan starched himself to make 150, rehydrated up the 165 overnight. You see the number and the 17 pound functional weight advantage that Margarito will carry into the ring. Live at ringside and turning now to Emmanuel Stewart. Emmanuel, if you had been charged with the responsibility of training Antonio Margarito for the difficult task of fighting Manny Pacquiao tonight, what plan would you have given him? to take advantage of that tremendous physical size that he has. He's not only taller, but much heavier. Put a lot of pressure on him, tight defense, and shoot punches up through the center. But he must put a lot of pressure. He cannot fight at a distance because Manny Pacquiao has great reflexes and one of the few boxers that I've saw in history that can get you in exchanges and knock you down because not only will he make you miss, but he lands punches as soon as he lets you miss. Does uh, Margarito have a chance? Pacquiao's a five to one favorite. I think the odds should be a little closer to that, just merely on the fact that he's a big man. There's about two or three weight differences. I think that Pacquiao should be favored, but not by no four or five. I think that Margarita does have a chance, yes. All right. Max Kellerman, ever since the beginning of modern boxing, when John L. Sullivan said, I can lick any bitch a lot, no sport has so succeeded in creating indelible cultural figures. From Jack Johnson and Jack Dempsey, through Joe Lewis to Muhammad Ali. And now Manny Pacquiao. How big is Manny Pacquiao? Well, he's definitely the biggest flyweight ever. Pacquiao is so big, he's now drawn two huge crowds to Dallas Cowboys Stadium this year. And I've even noticed the writing about Pacquiao is excellent, the sports writing about him. He attracts, as a subject, good writers and forces the rest to raise their game. It's as though something so special demands more of those in its orbit. He's going to demand more than Margarito has shown in recent fights. But even if Margarito doesn't bring more, we're in for a showcase of one of the greatest fighters who's ever lived. And he still looks at this moment like he's in his prime. I just love watching Pacquiao fight. And now let's get ready for both fighters to come into the arena and we'll talk to, we'll see them come in. First, Max, a look at the welterweight division picture where both Pacquiao and his missing foil, always discussed with him, Floyd Mayweather, fly their trade. Yeah, there's no welterweight division, it's a neighborhood. People will fight where the money is. The money men in the division and in boxing are Mayweather and Pacquiao, the two best fighters in the sport. Then there's Miguel Cotto, who's still exciting. Shane Mosley, who still has a name. Margarito, you'll see tonight. And Andre Berto, who's very fast and undefeated, although most want to see him in with some stiffer competition soon. Emmanuel Stewart, this all began when Manny Pacquiao took what some thought was the whimsical talent of Oscar De La Hoya and turned it into solid platinum by whipping De La Hoya the way he did. I think he's trapped himself now in the, in the sense that I don't know if I'll ever see him fight another guy his size as long as he's fighting. He has treated the public to the notion that he can constantly beat bigger men. Logic says eventually you bite off more than you can chew. That's very impossible. 
especially when you realize that he really, to me, is nothing but an older stuff lightweight. I mean, he walks around at 38. He's struggling to get up to 140, which means that he can actually go back to the 145 division where there's a lot of action in fight. But the size of his fight, Sergio Martinez and Paul Williams and those type guys, it's a little hard for me to factor. If he gets away with it tonight, I think he should stop there and start considering going back to fight a junior welterweight, a welterweight, which is what he really is. Of course, the question still lingers out there. When does he fight Floyd Mayweather? Mayweather? Or, more recently, the new question which emerges is, will he ever fight Floyd Mayweather? Tonight, he fights this man, Antonio Margarito, coming off of 22 months of purgatory. And Max Kellerman, one reason why Manny Pacquiao is such a heavy favorite tonight is that when Margarito returned to the ring after his one-year suspension against a fighter oddly named Robert Garcia, the same name as his trainer in Mexico, he did not look very good en route to a 10-round decision. No, ever since he was caught with the loaded hand wraps, he hasn't looked good. He was brutally knocked out by Shane Mosley. He looked mediocre against Garcia, for, especially for a guy who was once on top of the world. And now we have him in against Manny Pacquiao, one of the very greatest fighters who's ever lived. And of course, another outgrowth of the hand wrap controversy, Emmanuel, is that he fights a second fight with the relatively inexperienced Robert Garcia instead of his previous trainer, with whom he had been through most of his career, Javier Capetillo. So Point in the future. You know about the giant screen overhead here in Cowboys Stadium. The picture appeared, you heard the roar, and Emmanuel Stewart, it's inevitable that the world appreciation the global thunder of applause for Manny Pacquiao lifts the spirits of the fighter higher and higher and gives him greater and greater confidence. That is true, and, you know, and particularly this guy, he seems to love going to his job. He's a guy that thrives on the crowd for excitement, but he's still, I would say, the most exciting fighter that I've seen come along probably in many years since Mike Tyson. But what I admire about him more than any of the fighters, not even the most, he fights the best. And we've been watching him coming in for nearly six years, and he's only lost one fight, and that was a great fight with Eric Morales, who he knocked out twice. But he fought the best in every division that's been available for him. And, and always has been given an exciting performance. His 12, 12 fight winning streak, and on the screen they're showing his conquest of Miguel Cotto and Ricky Hatton. But the 12 fight win streak, Max Kellerman, a lot of people forget, includes two or in, uh, includes a close win over uh, Juan Manuel Marquez to go with an earlier draw with Marquez.
go to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, from the eighth wonder of the world of sports and entertainment, Mr. Jerry Jones, Dallas Cowboys Stadium, Arlington, Texas, USA. Paul Barham's top-ranked boxing, Cerveza con Carácter, AT&T, Viva Mexico plan. Make calls from your wireless phone as if they were a local call. EA Sports, Fight Night Champion, available March 1st. Smart Communications, the Philippines' largest mobile company, and Top Gear on the History Channel. The gearheads are coming to history with Top Gear. Premieres next Sunday, November 21st. And now, here are your three judges at ringside. Scoring the belt, Glenn Crocker, Jürgen Lagos, and Oren Schellenberger. This contest sanctioned by the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation, Executive Director William Kunz, Chairman Brian Francis, Boxing Administrator Dickie Cole, WBC President Jose Suleiman, and inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, referee Lawrence Cole. And now for the thousands in attendance and the millions around the world who wish they could be here. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, wearing black with red, officially weighing 150 pounds. His professional record, 38 victories, including 27 knockouts with six defeats. From Tijuana, Baja California, Norte, Mexico, the three-time champion of the world, El Tornado de Tijuana, Antonio Margarito. And fighting out of the red corner, standing with head trainer Freddie Roach, wearing white with gold. Official weight, 144, one half pounds. Professional record, 51 victories, including 38 knockouts, with three defeats and two bouts even. From Sarangani Province, Philippines, the seven time champion of the world, Manny. Rosaries, you want to take his rosaries off? Rosaries? All right, gentlemen. I went over things early in the dress room. I want you to obey my commands. Protect yourselves at all times. Understood? Play Olympia, you win or sweat thing, touch him up. Let's have a great fight. Antonio Margarito has said that Manny Pacquiao better be ready for war. Pacquiao always is, and so are we. evening in Cowboys Stadium. Prior to the fight, Antonio Margarito's hand wrapping exercise was because of his recent history, carefully observed, probably the most carefully watched hand wrap ever, and of course Pacquiao's hand wrap was so absurd. But during the same period of time, members of Pacquiao's camp believed they saw Antonio Margarito either drinking coffee or taking an ephedra-based substance in the dressing room. They protested to the Texas State Athletic Commission. The Athletic Commission had to bring the two trainers together. There were fierce and heated words on both sides. Eventually, it was determined that a drug test after the fight will have to be the measure of whether Margarito has taken a banned substance. And Pacquiao, for his part, gave no indication that he ever considered not entering the ring the fight. So here they are. And Margarito starting with a decent jab. 
something surely he has worked on in training. The question there, of course, becomes how long does it last? Pacquiao trying to get inside and go to the body. And Emmanuel Stewart, must Pacquiao fight a pressure fight? Uh, right now, Manny has said, I see the size difference. It's a big factor right now. I see he's punching. He's not used to punching at a man as big as this man is, who seems to be absorbing his blows pretty easy. Punching up at an angle robs you of power, does it not? Yes, it does. So he has and, a better uh, chance to affect Margarito with his normal power if Margarito hunches over and brings himself down to him a little bit. What I'm surprised about is Margarito's jab, which is a very good move. And that seems to be most, at this stage, the most dominant punch in the fight has been his left jab. And the last thing people expected to see was Antonio Margarito standing yeah. in the middle of the ring and boxing with Manny Pacquiao. But that's what's happened so far. There's a, a left hand over the top for Manny that brings the crowd to life for him. But Manny needs to try to catch Margarito when he's jabbing with a little left step back and shoot the straight left right through the center. But other than that, he may have a problem tonight. I see the physical size seems to be a big factor. What about going to Margarito's body and trying to bring Margarito's arms and head down? Well, one thing, Manny makes adjustments as the fight goes on very well. And if you notice, after most fights when we interview him, he tells you how I was smart, I played it a little safe, I made adjustments. He's a very intelligent fighter. Margarito has thrown almost exclusively jabs in the first round. That goes against the scouting report. Pacquiao with a good right-left combination upstairs. Margarito's grinning at him as twice Pacquiao fired the left right up the gut and landed it on Margarito's face. And Margarito has shown a good jab, especially early in the round, but Pacquiao's dominated this round with a right hook with a straight left hand to the body. Well, he's one maybe the remember. I don't think he's dominated. I think I, I see think a lot of pictures with the jabs of Margarito still. The speed advantage is unquestioned, Ma and you saw Pacquiao. Pacquiao's blazing hand speed at the end of the round. Beautiful body shots, beautiful jab. Keep that going, keep that rhythm perfect. going. Okay. That was perfect, perfect round. Perfect in jab more. Long jab, long jab, long jab. Take him on with the left, the jab. And then the right, but straight and fast. Not slow and not far away. Jab, 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 and then the right. All right, drink a little water. How are you feeling? Good? Happy box numbers in round one were fairly even. Pacquiao was 16 out of 63. Margarito 13 out of 53. The shock of the round, Margarito throwing 44 jabs out of 53 punches. I, I gave the round slightly to Pacquiao because he landed some pretty clean punches, but the left jab seems to be uh, becoming more of a factor as the fight goes on from Margarito. But I thought Pacquiao landed enough clean shots inside to slightly win the round. Margarito has been a notoriously slow starter through much of his career. A 53-punch output for Antonio Margarito in round one seems very low, but he has had trouble getting rolling in the early parts of some of his fights, notably the Paul Williams fight. Margarito still content to stand in the middle of the ring and box with Manny Pacquiao, has not tried to drive him to the ropes. The referee is Lawrence Cole. He's the son of Texas State Commission head Dickie Cole. And you usually see him at major fights here in Texas. You know, early in the Quaddy fight, Pacquiao was also hit a bit more than we're used to seeing him hit in recent fights. Yeah, and here Margarito. Margarito has landed not only some shots, he landed a headbutt followed by a right hand. These are hard shots from a big man. And the size, size has been a big factor in this fight, as I see right here. But speed belongs to Pacquiao. And so he rallies back there. Still, yeah, the loss of power from punching up could be a factor in the fight. Pacquiao beginning to focus a little more to the body, I think. That would well, probably be a good idea. I, I still see the same facial expression that Margarita had when he fought Cotto. I mean, you're not yeah, supposed to be on the ropes he, against, against Margarito, yeah. and there he is on the ropes, Emmanuel. Well, I say the size, I keep saying size, 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 but I just see that being a big factor in this fight right now, the way it's going. That was the first time that Pacquiao found his body against the ropes, and if there was one thing Freddie Roach harped on throughout training, it was, don't put your back on the ropes. Never. 
Looks like Pacquiao is determined not to be bullied by the bigger guy and is foregoing some defense and a little bit more in the mode that we saw him as a lighter fighter when he would go toe-to-toe -to -toe more with some of the great Mexican fighters that he beat south of lightweight. Good left hook inside by, or left cross inside by Pacquiao. He lands the right hook too as Margarito steps in. Margarito has been landing his jab. Pacquiao is landing power shots when he gets close. Uppercuts for Margarito, his favorite punch. He landed both the left and the right hand uppercut there. This is why when you asked me, could, did Margarito have a chance? I said yes, mainly a lot because of the size factor. And Pacquiao, I'm looking at the eyes. Pacquiao is much more uncomfortable than Margarito is at this stage, even though he may be winning the fight. Brand new experience for Pacquiao, of course, fighting a man this big. Delectable experience, perhaps, for Margarito, fighting a man this small. Couple of power shots at the end of the round, though, for Manny Pacquiao. Show bang with this guy. Let's break him down a little bit more with the boxing. Okay? We need to box. Right. Okay. When I was giving you the keys to victory earlier, I said Margarita didn't work left uppercuts or right uppercuts through the middle because in the past it's shown that Pacquiao is very vulnerable for punches up through the center. Active round, copy box count, 27 of 76 for Pacquiao, 26 of 85 for Margarita. They are separated by a punch or two in terms of landed punches in the first couple of rounds of the fight. But a lot of Margarito's lands are jabs, and most of Pacquiao's are power punches inside. You heard Freddie Roach saying to Pacquiao, it's too early to start trying to bang this guy around. You need to soften him up a little more. It's been a long time since Manny Pacquiao looked vulnerable. And he's looked a little vulnerable here early. Pacquiao pressing the speed advantage. Margarito still fighting for him. An unfamiliar fight in the middle of the ring. Boxing with his hands up. Doing reasonably well at it. Part of the book on the fight was Margarito's not a jabber. Doesn't have the kind of jab that will bother Pacquiao. First three rounds, Margarito's jab is bothering Pacquiao. Good straight left hand by Pacquiao. Brought it around Margarito's glove and landed flush. Another one. Little right hook inside for Pacquiao. Despite the vaunted Pacquiao power, none of these punches seem to be really bothering Margarito. They're just landing. Good right hook inside by Pacquiao, landed on the chin. Now Margarito talks to Lawrence Cole about headbutts. Pacquiao flirts with the corner there, then moves away. Now his back is against the ropes. Margarito tries to press the action. Pacquiao hits him flush with a big left hand. And then flurries and backs Margarito off again. Pacquiao using the hand speed advantage to get Margarito off of it. It does look like, Emmanuel, that Manny Pacquiao has figured out something in Margarito in the last minute or so. Yeah, the one thing he's got to do is punch in flurries and get in and out. Just trying to just force a knockout is not going to happen. He's got to eventually catch him with a clean shot. But in the meantime, I, I still see that the weight difference of Margaritas is pushing through and forcing Manny to back back. And it, it's, it's a difference in moving side to side, but he's pushing him straight back. Good right hand shot by Margarito around Pacquiao's guard. I think one thing Pacquiao's discovered in this round is that Margarito's gloves are split and he can throw his left hand straight up the middle. Pacquiao 
Now, hadn't won the round before the last 10 seconds. He yeah. might have stolen it. Yeah. Here you see Pacquiao land beautiful punches, even with his defense up. Margarita Shiv was getting good punches because of the accurate pinpoint punching power, Packy. But also, you notice at the end of all of this year, Margarita still has a smile on his face. Well, as guys will often do as they're being touched up. I'm not sure that that means <laughs> anything, really. Pacquiao now getting a little distance between himself and Margarito in copy box numbers. That was a very good round for Manny. Harold, how do you have it through three? Okay, Jim. Three to nothing. 30 to 27. Manny Pacquiao. Jim, I love the guy's power punching. I mean, you know, really, he's winning this fight on clean, effective punching. Now, he shows great regenerationship. Don't take it away from him. He, he throws the right, then he throws the left, then he steps to the side. So when Margarito comes out of the show, he don't hit him because the guy ain't there. You know, that's good regenerationship. Pacquiao does it all the time. Three to nothing, Pacquiao. I got to say, I agree with Harold, guys. I see this as a wide fight for Pacquiao. I think Margarito's doing well in spots and rounds, but I haven't seen a round I thought, oh, maybe no. Margarito won. No, I, I, give the, I give all three rounds to Pacquiao also. I think he's winning, but he's got to be prepared to... It maybe have to go the distance in case he gets a knockout fan. But you know, even though he's landing and winning the fight, he's got to be. But I hope he's in great shape. Well, I think you're looking at 12 rounds of nervous jeopardy, but he might win every round. What we see On the here. other hand, Margarito is telling his corner and has told them several times, according to interpreter Jerry Olaya, he has no power. He can't hurt me. Talking about Pacquiao. Now the marks begin to show on Margarito's face as he has a big red welt under his right eye. So Pacquiao can do that. Yeah, Margarito's saying that Pacquiao's not hurting him, but his face is telling a different story. Indeed. And Pacquiao's beginning to land with almost every punch. The difference here between Pacquiao and Mosley, who manhandled Margarito, is Pacquiao may be younger and better and faster than Mosley, but he's not as physically strong. And has to do this rather than just he heard bully him with a body punch Margarito around the ring. Yeah. He's beating Margarito up in this round. There's shot. a huge welt under Margarito's right eye. He's backing Margarito up, and he's hurting him. I and Margarito can say all he wants that Pacquiao can't hurt him, but that's not true. Pacquiao hurt him with a body punch, I think, and everybody took all of the starch out of him. Margarito misses wildly with a right to the body. Pacquiao is fully in control now. Hand speed slices you up. That's what's happening now. And Pacquiao, no matter how small he is relative to his opponent, has never stopped punching like he means it. No, it but what, he, what makes him different from a lot of the day's fight, he punches through his opponents. Most of the fighters today, they punch at the target. Very seldom do they penetrate. Pacquiao stood still for a moment, got backed in the ropes and hit with an uppercut. And that's the only bad moment so far in an otherwise totally dominant round. Margarita slowed down tremendously this round, even though he wasn't doing too much and was losing. But it seemed like that one body punch took everything out of him. Among all the experts' comments coming into the fight, one of the ones I found most interesting was from Joshua Clotty. Clotty said Margarito's mistake will be to think that Pacquiao doesn't have the power to hurt him. Trust me, he has the power to hurt him. Work the eye. Let me see the eye. Yeah, yes. Yeah. It's okay. Tony, you got to close up the defense. But you've got to throw your hands in. Use your jab. Use the jab first. Start up with the jab. Here you see the left hand shot to the bottom, which I think started all of the serious problems for Margarita. Even though he was being not pointed, seemingly with that shot, he never has recuperated. And if you notice, his body form is bending over as if he's still hurt from the body punch. He looked wilted at the end of the round. And that right eye doesn't look good. The cut man in Antonio Margarito's corner is Francisco Espinoza. He's got a big job on his hands now. 
sensational round for Pacquiao, who landed 43 of 62 power shots, demonstrating what a lot of people said coming into the fight, that Margarito is a big but easy target. Compia Box tells us that Manny's output in round four represents the largest number of punches ever landed on Antonio Margarito in a single round. Now, you know, Pacquiao punches is very accurate, too. He doesn't just waste punches. His punches are very accurate. I think he's the most accurate puncher in boxing, Emmanuel. He even has the ability to adjust the punch in mid arc Yeah. Margarito going to the body against the ropes. That was the first moment that Margarito actually made it look for a moment this, this like his fight against Cotto. And here comes Pacquiao. As always. He loves to answer back. Yes. <laughs> Incidentally, guys. I mentioned CompuBox saying that Pacquiao just landed the most punches ever landed on Antonio Margarito in a single round. This despite the fact that Margarito went 12 rounds with extreme volume puncher Paul Williams. He fought a great fight against him. But Pacquiao's hitting him harder. Yeah. That's, Absolutely. That's, he jolted that's, that's, Pac or jolted Margarito with a left hand there. Jolts him with a right hook there. Pacquiao's fighting spirit is something to behold. He loves fighting. And, you know, he always wants to get the better of an exchange. That's why it's hard to win rounds against him, because if you get him with a punch, he's going to get you back before the bell rings. And look at the different angles that the punches are coming from. When Pacquiao's trainer, Freddie Roach, was asked about the huge weight advantage that was likely here for Margarito, he said, look, I hope he goes up to 180. Every pound he adds is better for us. Pacquiao takes his little breathers by the ropes, and Margarito takes advantage. But he didn't have a lot of snap on his punches, did he? Yeah, that's right. He, Margarito doesn't have much punch, uh, punching power at all at this stage. He has had something taken out of him again, Emmanuel. The body shots. That one shot to the body seemed to have changed the fight tremendously. Not that Margarito was winning, but at least he was fighting with better spirit and better speed. But that one shot... Everything seemed to sap out of him for a moment. Well, of course, since Manny's a southpaw, it wasn't a left hook to the body. It's a left cross. But the oh, bottom Margarito line staggered. lands in the same place. Straight left-hand shots for Pacquiao. Staggering Margarito momentarily there. Big right hook. Great shot. Another great round for Pacquiao. What round is it? What round is it? Oh, it's okay. Sixth. Well, the right eye for Margarito speaks for itself. And just to make things worse, that's the eye out of which Margarito has to try to track Manny Pacquiao's lightning left hand. Maybe the fastest punch in boxing. You know what? And, and not just speed, but he punches with power. Most of the guys that have speed, they don't have power. Pacquiao in the fifth. Or, or Pacquiao through the first five rounds, averaging 33 out of 81. Margarito averaging 18 out of 63. 63 punches average per round for Antonio Margarito, who at the height of his career a few years ago was averaging 100 punches per round. The punch output gets limited when you start fighting in a brand new style, as he's doing tonight, and when you start to get hit hard by somebody like Manny Pacquiao. And Look at Pacquiao move from side to this side. Is, this is what I said he should do continually. Creating angles? Creating angles, yeah, because There's Margarito, no way Margarito can no, find him. No. no way Margarito finds him when he does that. Just too much side to side. 
Pacquiao was moving to his left to start the round to try to move into Margarito's eye where Margarito couldn't see him. That didn't work, so he, he started moving right and beat him up that way. Offseason last year, Chicago Bears cornerback Charles Tillman made a pilgrimage to Las Vegas to watch Manny Pacquiao fight against Miguel Cotto. Afterward, I asked him what was most impressive. He said, "Easy, the footwork. I've never seen yeah. any athlete very, in any sport. Yeah, very few people realize that his footwork is phenomenal. Yeah, that's and, what Tillman said. Punch. I've never seen an athlete in any sport who can get to so many places so fast and have punching power. A lot of guys move, but it's strictly footwork. He can move and punch from any of those angles or balance positions that he's in." Margarito having a better round this one than the last couple. Still losing by a wide margin, obviously, but actually landing some punches yeah. in exchange. Well, Manny's taking something of a breather this round, it appears to me. But he's winning the round still, I think, uh, Manny. By I, a wide I've, given, I've given Manny every round of the fight so far. Some bigger than others, but he's winning all of them. Now Margarito catches Pacquiao twice against the ropes, and Manny finally is able to dodge away. But this gives Margarito energy. This yeah. gives him will and confidence. Suddenly he's back in the fight as he's tasted for a moment the advantage of having Pacquiao against the ropes. This is Pacquiao's nightmare. Locked in a trap against a much bigger man. Fights his way out of it. Bloodies Margarito some more. said just the ropes the best exchange of the night that favored margarita right here when he was landing a lot of blows and polo manny was trying to get away from him and he was landing shots body and head but at the end of the round still manny came right back with a lot of blows again which still man, it could have been a close round because that was the only really good play for Ma of margarita but i think margarita should have won that round Pacquiao's racking up some astonishing numbers though 39 power punches landed in that round Now round seven begins the more than halfway through the fight. Harold Letterman, how do you have it so far? Okay, Jim. I got it six to nothing, six to the fifty-four. Manny Pacquiao. I gotta tell you, as close as that sixth round was, Manny Pacquiao still landed the clean or hardest shots. I thought he pulled it out in the end. Be as it may, Manny circling back and forth, you know, bobbing and weaving, getting on the margarita shots, and landed tremendous shots of his own. And Jim, the one thing we can't measure is the amount of pain that Margarito feels every time he gets hit on that on that swollen eye. I mean, he really must be hurting. Six to nothing, Pacquiao. I agree with Harold. I thought Pacquiao was one every round, including the last one. You know, and Jim. But, but you got those rounds that is called comparative rounds. I thought Manny wanted. But I think that on the scorecard, Margarita may get it because it compared to the other rounds. Yeah. But he really didn't win it. But a lot of judges do that just to keep him in the fight, so to say. Jim, you mentioned that it's Pacquiao's nightmare. I think Pacquiao loves it. It might be Freddie Roach's nightmare to get trapped in that fight. But I think Pacquiao loves a good scrap like the last round. I think you're correct. I think it's Freddie Roach's nightmare. I think it might be Bob Arum's nightmare. But the bottom line is you're right. Manny loves to fight. Loves to fight. Loves the challenge. Well, this is a dazzling display of boxing skill, power, everything. Ring generalship here. Unbelievable. So, in a historical sense, and obviously the fight's not over, but how good is he, Emmanuel? 
I think he's one of the best fighters I've ever saw. And he's what we call a natural. Then getting rid of a good trainer that really improved him like Freddie did and brought the best out of him. But he is a natural fighter. Well, I'll say this. I've covered boxing for 24 years, and I covered Ray Leonard from ringside, and this is the best offensive fighter I've ever seen. He does it all and fights everybody. That's what I like about him. Because he's, he's really enjoying himself here. You see him try to do the kind of Ollie shuffle <laughs> a few seconds ago. See what's kept Margarito up in this fight is his enormous size. The size. Advantage. The only thing, Jim, before the fight, you said you could see it possibly going a 12 round decision only because of Margarito's size. Yep. That's the only factor, but it's strictly a Pacquiao show. No, if, if I had a prediction, it was going to be that Pacquiao would win all 12 rounds, win a unanimous decision, and there'd be a lot of nervous moments in it. Yes. I thought Pacquiao would stop Margarito right around the sixth or seventh round. And, um, you may be on target. Or, or you may be because Margarito is, 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 seems to be weathering these storms pretty well in spite of the look, in spite of the way his face looks. Margarito's hanging in and he's having more flurries as the fight continues, but Pacquiao just stunned him with a right hook and backed him off again. Two more big power shots for Pacquiao to finish the round. Come on, Tony, you got to do it. Close them up. Is the agents coming in? Use your jab, more movement, more bend your waist, and attack. Here you see Manny Pacquiao landing all of these precise punches, even with a guards up in high defense, he still pinpoints areas where he can get through and penetrate. But to me, the fight, the perfect fight is the way he fought the last round, punching, moving, in and out, taking advantage of that great natural coordination and balance and footwork that he has. Copy box numbers in round seven. Pacquiao 45 of 104, his high output for the fight. Margarito 31 out of 71, his best round of the fight, landing at 44%. Harold Letterman has still given every round in the fight so far to Manny Pacquiao. And incidentally, I'll alter my prediction, guys. If Margarito throws an uppercut from too far away, <laughs> Pacquiao might counter him and knock him out. That replay that we just showed was a six-punch combination where every punch landed from Pacquiao in the middle of the ring. And they look at the fact that Margarito had his defense up all that time, and he penetrated amazing. to defense. is amazing. There was a time in the middle of his career when Manny Pacquiao was a terrific, world-class, one-handed fighter. Margarito banging him against the ropes here, trying to get to Pacquiao's body. That could change the fight. Pacquiao fighting back with his back on the ropes. And here comes And he Manny. turns it around and bangs Margarito viciously. Left cross straight on the bad eye. And another one right on that Badly bruised right eye of Margarito. Pacquiao hits him again with the left. Margarito nods at him. Pacquiao hits him at will. Bang! Know who Every else likes to fight? Wants. Know who else likes to fight? Margarito. Margarito, absolutely. You know, I've, I've trained in a gym with Margarito. And what, he trains low, low there. going 15 and 16 rounds. That's because he wins his fights on stamina. So even though he's tired and, and, and being beat up pretty much, he trains himself to fight this way. So he's still going to be fighting very strong going down the stretch in this fight. Because that's his biggest factor, is fighting while he's tired. And he's blocking some of the punches, taking some. He took a big left hook there. Remember, Pacquiao is taking full shots from a 165-pound man who outweighs him 17 pounds in the ring tonight. And speaking of redemption for Margarito, so far this has been a measure of redemption because he's never stopped fighting his fight in spite of a frightful beating. And he's had success fighting in spots the way we used to see him knock out good opponents. But he's not 
breaking Manny Pacquiao up the way he did Miguel Cotto. Draw your own conclusions. I talked to Miguel earlier today. Miguel said this was going to be a very tough fight. As I was telling him, I thought that Pacquiao had to edge. He said, man, he may have edge, but it's going to be a hard fight. What an exchange. What a fight. I mean, this is a fun fight to watch for a fight that's being won fairly one-sidedly by Pacquiao. But don't let him go away, Tony. Don't let him escape. He's got the conditioning. We've got four damn rounds. Okay. Four damn rounds. Let's go. This is it. This is it. It's the same cut. It hasn't moved. It's the same thing. Same thing, doctor. Don't let him put you on the ropes. He did back in the middle, and back came out and put him on the ropes. Come on, open up for me. I want you to hold your breath for a second. Here you see Pacquiao in the ropes again, which is where every time that Margarita has a good rally, or so to say, it's always when he's got him pitting in the ropes. But usually right after that always, Manny comes right back with a flurry of punches. But Margarita's best success has been when he's had him in the ropes. And here it is, left uppercut, which is his weakness, right up through the center. Shots in the eighth round. Pacquiao landed 35 out of 65. That's sensational. Margarito had a tremendous round, landing 29 out of 55. Again, Harold Letterman continues to give every round to Manny Pacquiao. So I think with the rest of us. Even when Margarito's having those great moments with Pacquiao's back on the ropes, Pacquiao, even in those moments, is landing almost as much as Margarito, it seems to me. And gentlemen, CompuBox reports that the 34 punches Margarito landed in that last round are the most anybody's ever landed against Manny Pacquiao in a single round. So now Pacquiao has a new distinction in his career. He took the most punches he's ever taken in one round from a guy who outweighs him 17 pounds. And Manny holds on. I mean, he did everything, in the, the, but the 15-pound weight advantage was too much. And it will Robinson down. Remember that when Henry Armstrong went up and tried to win the middleweight championship after having won the featherweight, lightweight, and welterweight championships already, he ran out of gas against a bigger man. Seferino Garcia, and that was in once the case again. It was just too much weight difference. Oh, well, he got a draw. Yeah, many call think, draw, many call think he draw, deserves yes, to win. Yeah. But it's just a bigger man can absorb the punches a little better than a smaller guy. But a regular 140 pounder, I think Manny would have knocked out. There was another left hand rally by Manny Pacquiao. But showing intelligence and perhaps some fatigue, Pacquiao for the first time in this round has begun to move away simply to create space between himself and Margarito. Call it breathing room. And smart strategy. Uh he can pretty much do what he wants from long range, even though he's a smaller fighter. Pacquiao. Another anomaly. If he's in good shape and he can continue to do this, he'll win the fight fairly easy. But, you know, once he gets in the ropes, Margarita uses his physical strength to rough him up. It does seem as though Pacquiao's maybe decided that he can't knock Margarito out at this point. Unless somebody wants to stop the fight because of that right eye, which is grotesque at this point. And as I said, that Pacquiao landed some great hooks. Knockout style hooks. Nothing. The cut is nothing. Breathe, breathe. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Tony. 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 Damn, damn. No, no, forget about that. You've got to get in close. Get in close. The last two rounds, you've got to knock him out. Here you see Manny Pacquiao do what he does better than any boxer in the game. Let a guy miss, catch him with a punch, let him miss, hit him with a punch again. A lot of guys will let guys miss punches, but they don't take advantage of it the way that he does. How painful was that? And there's Michelle Margarito, Antonio's wife. 
unaccountably with a big grin on her face while her husband's face is being treated in the corner and is becoming a grotesque bloody mask. He has a cut under his eye, Margarito, you saw in that replay. When he gets hit, it flaps. Stop. Time. Quantos, quantos, quantos. Well, it's Cole trying to see if Antonio Margarito can still see. Tests him in the middle of the ring. Harold, how do you have it so far? I still got it a shout out. 90 to 81, nine rounds to nothing. The hard punching Manny Pacquiao. Jim, he's landed a clean of hardest shots in every round. He's elusive as all get out, like Emmanuel's been saying. I mean, he's doing it all right. Beautiful ring generalship, fairly good defense. You know, he's been really aggressive, just fighting the perfect fight. Nine to nothing, Manny Pacquiao. Just the way it does, and he wins all 12 rounds against a guy 17 pounds bigger than himself. Touching him up, beating him up, ruining his face the way he is. This will be in the discussion. Well, it's not just that Margarito's 17 pounds bigger, it's that Pacquiao's moved up 40 pounds and then gave away 17 pounds. Right. He's a former flyweight beating yeah. up one of the biggest welterweights we ever saw. Yes. And I still don't consider Pacquiao no. The beard, which probably they would have done. Pacquiao said, leave it there. I want to use it as a target. That's a fighter. Unbelievable machine. He's putting it on Margarito right now. And the crowd picks up the tip. Manny, Manny, Manny. Boom! Another perfect right hook. What a show. What an amazing performance. Greatest offensive fighter of the era. Tattooing Park Margarita. Well, well when all of that, the, the Margarita is just mentally, totally, physically fatigued both. And this uh, what right hook. That's he 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 ready right. to go. That's one of the biggest jabs yeah. I've ever seen. It was a right hook. He didn't see yeah. it coming. That was a right hook from Pacquiao. Yeah. Pacquiao Stop tried Margarito in his tracks. Perfect fight. He had another 30 seconds. He still may stop him. He may, not, he may not get. He may get out of this round, but I think it's a good chance that Pacquiao may stop him in the next couple of rounds. How badly does Margarito want to get beat up? Garcia may stop the I'm fight okay. here. I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. How are you? Tell me how are you, bastard. I'm okay. Ballsy. You have him in front and you don't throw. It's the same. There's one round. There's two rounds left. How many fingers? One, 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 one. Two. Come on, Tony. I want to see you in this round, Tony. If not, if not, you got to knock him out. Throw, come on, Tony. Throw everything. Throw it all. Good. Done. Bring your hands up, Tony. Bring your hands up. Close up. Recoup. Come on. Get in and throw, Tony. Here you see this counter right hook, which is, as I said earlier, one of the best punches that you can land, and, he, and he's very good at that. Used to be when he first came here, he had a great straight left, and that's all you had to look out for. But now he's developing to a balanced out fighter, right hook, jab, right uppercut, straight left through the saddle, complete fighter. Once he added the right hand to his stunning left cross, that took him to an entirely different stratosphere in offensive fighting. The 10th round was one of the most brutally dominant rounds of Pacquiao's career. He landed 57 of 89 power shots. Margarito threw 23 punches and landed nine. That's why Robert Garcia clearly gave consideration to stopping the fight. Another measure of redemption for Margarito. Even though he's the villain with the hand wraps, he has a ton of heart. He could have gotten out of this fight a million times whenever the ref says, how many fingers am I holding? He wants to keep fighting. He's not just doing it as a show for the referee, or for, or for the fans, rather. Look at me, I'm tough. He really wants to win the fight, even though he's hopelessly behind and no, getting No hand movement at all. 
He's the referee, there's no head movement. Pacquiao off. looking towards the ref, asking him to stop the fight at this point, it looks to me. Landed a shot, looked towards Coles. He as again well, looks I, at Cole. I think How ref, much punishment do you want him to take? The ref, that is, that's what he's saying to Cole. But the referee's doing a good job, I think. It's, it's right that you can't stop it yet. Because as long as the guy's punching back. If he was back to the ropes and being hit or something, would be different. But at this stage here, he's out being out punched. But the referee has to wait have a few more seconds before he decides. Well, he's rearranging Margarito's face, and it may never look the same again. I don't know, but it's just it, this, this is boxing. I hate to say it. This is a vicious This is boxing, yeah. yeah. The issue is not Margarito's eye at this moment, it's his brain. How many clean headshots can one man take? I mean... His punches have zero snap. He is waving at Pacquiao. If the referee stopped, there wouldn't be any complaint, but I just don't think he's going to stop at this table. It's really not it it's, a Lawrence Cole. it's a, a solid target. He's not moving his head at all. This reminds me of Roy Jones against Bryant Brannon. Jones actually asked the referee, when in the heck are you going to stop this stop. fight? Stop. And then Jones shrugged and knocked Brannon out. That's exactly right. But it's not just completed, just he's getting hit so much, but just looking at his eyes, he can't even hardly see. Margarito fought to the finish against Shane Mosley, who is hammering him similarly to this. Corner asked if they wanted the fight, or if he wanted the fight stopped. He said no. Wanted the fight to the finish. Same thing here, obviously. But it's not doing Margarito any good to take the number of shots he's taking now. Flush on a, an already badly brutalized face. Corner may stop it. He didn't do much in that round. No, no, no. Let's go. Let's go then. Let's go then, Tony. It's not bleeding. It's the same thing. It's the last round. Last damn round, Tony. Tony, you okay? Tony, we got to work the jab. We got to work the jab. Come on, precise. Work that jab. I want you to do it lively, lively. Be lively. Don't just, don't just receive the punishment. Let's go. You can do it. Come on, have that mentality. You can do it. This is last damn round. Is it, is they're acting in the corner as if he wants to quit, and they're trying to force him to keep fighting, to co coach him to fight. But they never took the mouthpiece out. He only landed six out of 18 punches in the 11th round. That after 9 of 23 in the 10th. Pacquiao landed 51 of 75 power shots in the last round, meaning he is more or less hitting Margarito at will. One more round to go. When Pacquiao was doing this to Miguel Cotto, Cotto's wife left the arena. You can see that the smile is utterly gone from the face of Margarito's spouse. They've been together since high school. She's never seen him like this. Max, I honestly wonder whether Pacquiao has no more stomach for the punishment. He doesn't seem eager to hit Margarito anymore. He does look like he's carrying Margarito yeah. right now. As much like Joe Calzaghe Some did. of the greatest fighters in history have done this. Joe, uh, Joe Calzaghe seemingly was doing that with Roy Jones in the later rounds, too. Absolutely. There's no question Pacquiao's pulling his punches now. He is not following through and committing the way he does most of the time. It's an acknowledgement from Pacquiao that the knockout isn't necessary. To a certain degree, it's a nod to Margarito's guts and courage for coming as far as he has. And Pacquiao is going to let him finish the fight. You wonder seeing this, as much as, as great as Pacquiao is and as dominant as he's been, Margarito's not known as an accurate puncher. You wonder if Floyd Mayweather's watching this thinking, maybe the time is right to fight this guy. For years, Sugar Ray Leonard wouldn't fight Marvin Hagler. Of course, Hagler is much bigger than Leonard. 
um, until he felt the time was right. He noticed Hagler slow down against Duran and Mugabe. Then he took the fight. You wonder if maybe Floyd is waiting for Pacquiao to slow down a little bit. Because to my eye, guys, this Pacquiao's not quite the same as the Pacquiao of maybe a year or two ago. A little know, easier to hit. That's hard to say because yeah. he's fighting such different guys every guy. time yeah. out, and they're all so big. Yeah. Now suddenly there's some many energy. Looks as though he wants to make sure that he wins the round, make clear who's still dominant, but obviously he's not trying to finish Margarito. This is not Manny Pacquiao the fighter. This is Manny Pacquiao the congressman, Manny Pacquiao the cultural icon, Manny Pacquiao the citizen of the world. That's the man who's letting Margarito finish. Jim, your prediction was right. Pacquiao has his unanimous decision victory. Margarito has a vicious beatdown to remember. And the satisfaction of having finished the fight. Cold comfort, though, that may be. Harold Letterman scores it 120 to 108. That's a shutout. If I were scoring, that would have been mine too. I gave one round to uh, Margarito. Margarito. I believe you gave him the fifth. I gave him the. Uh, it's a comparative round anyway. He six, did something round. like that. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like a courtesy round. Courtesy what round. What you're saying right. is he did well enough in that round that if you wanted to give him one, that would be it. Yeah, I gave him the sixth round. Sixth. Yeah. He didn't get beat that bad in the sixth round. It's a relatively inexperienced judging crew in some ways, so there's no telling what the scores will be, but it's impossible to imagine that Margarito has the edge on any scorecard. You saw Fernando Vargas there talking to Margarito in the corner. A happy Pacquiao corner. Manny's face showing some effects, but not much. Considering that he ate some uppercuts and some uh, jabs early. Yeah, he got hit a little bit in this fight. Body and head. Well, I'm not of the opinion that Pacquiao's ever been hard to hit, Emmanuel. You can hit him. The question is how many times is he going to hit you? Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen from Cowboys Stadium, we go to the scorecards. Jay Lango scores the bout 120-108. Glenn Crocker, 118-110. Orange Schellenberger, 119-109. All three to the winner by unanimous decision. And now winner of his eighth world championship, the fighting pride of Serengani Province, Philippines, Manny. Victory number 52 in Manny Pacquiao's now legendary career. His 13th consecutive win in this the late stages of his career. His fifth consecutive conquest of a significantly bigger man. A vicious beatdown of a guy who outweighed him 17 pounds in the ring. CompuBox numbers colossally one-sided. Pacquiao lands 245 more punches, throws 252 more punches, lands at a super high 44% connect rate. 58% of his power shots. Against a guy who has held world titles, 58% of his power shots, that's just astonishing. And now let's take a look at Punch Zone to see where Pacquiao was touching Margarito up. And of course you saw it. 117 landed punches on the side of Margarito's face that was turned into hamburger by the fourth or fifth round. 136 landed punches on the other side of the head and 148 on the chin. That's 401, and I'll make it 399. 399 punches landed upstairs. No, 401. That was correct the first time. Credit to producer Dave Harmon. He was right. And the body shots, and 
all these numbers and further testimony to the greatness of Manny Pacquiao and Max is with him right now. Congratulations, Manny, on another brilliant performance. That's a pretty big guy you just beat up. What was that like? Uh, I mean, um, I, it's hard. I really, uh, I mean, I, I really do my best to, to win the fight. He's strong and, uh, I mean, uh, he's a very tough fighter and I can't believe it. What can't you believe? I mean, um, the, the, you know, he's very tough and strong and I, I, I never expect that one. You never expected him to be as strong as he was? Yes. It looked as though by the middle of the fight, you were putting your back on the ropes and letting him work you over a little bit. Why was your back on the ropes? Well, I'm trying to psycho him that I'm not, I'm not hurting his punches, but you know, but the truth is I, I, I really strong and I, I got hurt. When did you get hurt? When uh, I, I stay in the, in the rope. He did, he hurt you, where did he hurt you? Yes, in the body and um, in, the, in the face. He got, he got me in the uppercut, so. And um, I'm so lucky tonight. By the end of the fight, the last couple of rounds, it looked to us as though you turned to the referee, maybe asking him to stop the fight. Can you tell us what happened there when you were looking towards the referee in the 11th round? Yeah, because um, I, I, I feel pity to my, to my opponent, and he looks um, his eyes and his uh, bloody face, and, you know, uh, take a look for, for that. In the 12th round, it looked to us like maybe you were backing off a little bit, maybe not to hurt him. Did you carry him in the 12th round? Well, I'm not looking on, on the 12th round. I'm not um, looking for a knockout. I'm just, uh, I, you know, uh, I want to finish the round. So you were easing up a little bit in the 12th? Yeah, I take it easy because my, my trainer said, you know, and he said, take it easy and you win the round and, and just, just be careful, answer. Okay, we keep wondering when there's going to be a guy who's just too big for you. Is this as big a guy as you can fight? I mean, uh, it's, that's why I, I, I can say it's really hard, you know, yeah, fighting with Miguel Mukoto. He's, he's very he's big and taller than me, and I can't believe that I, I beat like that easy. Okay, and finally, no one can end an interview with you without asking you about a potential fight with Floyd Mayweather. What's your comment at this point? Uh, for me, I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not scared to fight anybody as long as uh, there's uh, not gonna problem with uh, the negotiation of the, my promoter. And that's my promoter job. I'm just a fighter to, to do my job and train hard for the fight. Manny, thanks again. Another brilliant performance. We look forward to seeing you again as soon as possible. But, well, excuse me, what are your plans? Are you going to continue to fight? Yes, I'm, I, I'm still strong and I continue to fight and I want to thank, you know, I want to thank God for giving me strength tonight and the victory that he gave in tonight and also that the, to all the fans who came here tonight and to watch the, a good fight and that's, that's all I can give and, you know, I'm trying to, to make people happy. You are a dedicated congressman and talk about liking going back to that job. So the pull of Congress has not yet overtaken the pull of the ring? I, that's why now I, mean, I have another job after this. I'm going back to the Philippines and do my job as a, a public servant and I want to help people. Thank you. Thanks. Well, no one can ever question your heart, Tony. Tell us what that fight was like for you. Bueno, sí. La verdad, pues, Manny, sabíamos que era bastante rápido, bastante rápido. La verdad, todo estaba bien, nomás cuando me cortó. We knew Manny was very fast, and we were going good until I got cut, and then that's when the problems started coming. Did you ever consider stopping the fight? No, para nada. Yo como todo, todo como todo mexicano siempre doy corazón arriba del ring, y la verdad le fallé esta vez a mi México nuevamente, pero vamos para adelante. No, no way, I'm a Mexican. We fight till the end. Right. And this time I failed Mexico, but we'll fight till the end. Robert, I'd like to ask you, because he's a Mexican who fights till the end, but was taking a real beating, did you ever consider stopping the fight and maybe saving Tony from himself? Never did. Tony's a warrior, and he would have never allowed me to stop this fight. Thank you both. Jim? 
All right, so a good look at the winner and the loser, and Manny Pacquiao has yet another stunning triumph, another feather in his cap, another credential to add to his already historic list, and Emmanuel Stewart at this point, he's running out of opponents. We mentioned Floyd Mayweather. That's the fight that everybody continues to talk about, but in the assumption that maybe Mayweather isn't available again. Miguel Cotto's here at ringside, your fighter. There's talk of a possible rematch with Pacquiao. Shane Mosley's here. He says he's a promotional free agent now, which may be required to get a fight with Pacquiao, and he says he thinks there'll be some talk about it. Who else? That's very difficult right now. It, it, he's went through everybody, and just the idea of him fighting Martinez, or uh, either Paul Williams or someone like that. I mean, extremely big guys. It's, it, it just doesn't fit too well. Big guys who are fast. Big, big guys who are fast also. I think that, believe it or not, I think the excitement that's going on in the 140-pound division, weird as it is, it might be we have to go with the Amir Khans and those type fighters that are coming up, and uh, the Tim Bradley and those type guys. He may have to go back to that. I mean, maybe just jumping up and fighting up to say you're going up, up, up. But it's, after a while, I think he's plateaued out here. Well. It was another great performance by Pacquiao, and he continues to look for further um, mountains to climb and, and new worlds to conquer in boxing. And again, uh, Emmanuel and I just discussed it. Max, welcome back. Seems to be running out of opponents. What do you see coming down the road? Well, I'd first like to make a comment about what we saw tonight. Yeah. In the sense that the, the NFL champion will be crowned later in this NFL season here at Dallas Cowboys Stadium. But there's no super brawl this year, and there wasn't one last year or the year before that, because Floyd Mayweather seems to not be willing to fight Manny Pacquiao. And as I mentioned during the last round of, uh, of the fight we just saw with Pacquiao and Margarito, sometimes a fighter, think of Sugar Ray Leonard watching Marvin Hagler, waits for his chief rival to slow down, waits for just the right moment to fight him. And as impressive as Pacquiao just looked, he got hit much more than we've seen him get hit in years, looked much more vulnerable, admitted after the fight that he was hurt a couple times to the head and the body. And I think if it's the case that Mayweather's waiting for the right time to fight Pacquiao, the time might be approaching. At least we should hope it's approaching. So years from now, we'll say, you know, Mayweather was a genius. He waited for Pacquiao to fight five bigger guys. He watched him fight a guy who was 17 pounds larger. Maybe he'll take the fight next week. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks very much, Max and Emmanuel, and thanks to you for being with us on another tremendous night in Cowboy Stadium and another tremendous night for Manny Pacquiao, a familiar and richly satisfying continuing story in boxing. Pacquiao versus Margarito has been brought to you by... Cowboy Stadium, Cerveza Tecate, Con Caracter, AT&T Viva Mexico plan. Make calls with your wireless phone to or from Mexico as if they were local calls. EA Sports Fight Night Champion, available March 1, 2011. Hot wings, cool joint, friendly atmosphere, wing stop, fuel for fight night. The gearheads are coming to history with Top Gear, premiering next Sunday, November 21. And by HBO Pay-Per-View, the best in pay-per-view entertainment, brought to you by HBO. We'd also like to thank the following internet partners. You can get exclusive updates from HBO's Facebook and Twitter sites, and as always at HBO.com, the online home of HBO Boxing. And now for our entire crew, I'm Jim Lampley, saying so long from Cowboy Stadium in Arlington, Texas.